Across all cultures worldwide, there exists a belief in demonic possession. Demonic possession stems from the idea that our consciousness can be subverted by manipulative and fundamentally evil entities. Evil entities which have the power to affect not only human events, but to enter human bodies as well. Some have dismissed possessions as being merely hysteria or mental illness. Yet, there are those who believe in the power of evil, and that the human mind can indeed play host to malevolent supernatural forces. In many traditionally Catholic countries, there is claimed to be a growing number of cases of demonic possession. Across Italy in 2018, it is claimed that the number of demonic possession cases tripled to around 500,000 in a year. A rise in the number of demonic possession cases can also be found in many other Catholic countries, including Ireland and Spain, where the number of official exorcists is increasing each year. According to the Vatican-sponsored International Association of Exorcists, the increase in the number of possession cases is so severe that it is posing a pastoral emergency. There are simply not enough exorcists to meet the demand for exorcisms. It was on the 5th of June in 2016 that Metro News reported on one such alleged case of demonic interference. The video which accompanied the story shows a woman in the back of an ambulance. It is believed to have been recorded in Spain. In the video, the woman, believed to be named Carmela, can be seen lurching wildly, baring her teeth, and speaking in a seemingly inhuman tone of voice. The voice claims not to be Carmela, but some other entity who has taken control of her body. At the beginning of the video, this voice, rather hauntingly, says, She is dying and is going to rot in hell. She no longer exists on this earth. My father, Satan, is coming for her. <laughs> Terrifyingly, what is claimed to be a demonic entity inside the lady proceeds to suggest that it wants the baby that she is pregnant with. He is mine, the voice states in Spanish. He is for me. When questioned whether it could be another baby, the sinister voice vehemently replies, no. Whoever or whatever was speaking was absolutely committed to having her baby. After this, the video cuts off mid-speech. Unfortunately, the fate of Carmela was not reported on and as such remains obscure. The video can be said to be an illustration of many of the symptoms associated with supposed demonic possession. Abnormal bodily movements, a deep, gruff voice, outward signs of aggression and hostility. There are not, however, enough facts to ascertain any definitive conclusion to the case. Undoubtedly, there are other explanations which might help to explain what is happening in this video. An underlying trauma connected to the lady's pregnancy may, for example, have contributed to her shocking condition. Her demonic possession could instead be her subconscious mind using the prevailing Catholic culture in a way that could help her justify getting rid of her child. Such a deep inner conflict might very well manifest as a form of psychosis, in which her anxieties regarding the child are warped by elements of Catholic belief, namely possession by an evil force. At the end of the video, just before it cuts off, the alleged demon within Carmela states that it must be her baby, for she is Christian. 
that the lady's faith is part of the justification for demonic forces to claim her child certainly seems to indicate that there is a conflict within her regarding her religion. Yet, for all of this, one could make the point that such an inner struggle, if it exists, would provide the perfect environment for Satan's forces. Emotional or mental fragility is, after all, often a factor in possession cases. Whatever the truth of the matter, Carmela is not alone. There are perhaps millions of people who have experienced a struggle similar to the one captured in this video. In 2013, a disturbing video emerged from one of Nigeria's largest Christian television networks, Emmanuel TV. It featured a man named Eni Eboka. In it, he is claimed to have been demonically possessed. It was during an exorcism captured on camera that he was allegedly purged of his demons. In the course of the exorcism, Ibaka is believed to have lost control of his bladder whilst writhing on the ground. His body contorts and moves in unnatural ways, consistent with other cases of alleged demonic possession. He slithers around on the floor and even spits at the cameraman. When interviewed afterwards, Ibaka described how he was aggressive and began to spit my venom towards the cameraman to blind his eyes. I wanted to blind him. He also claimed to have felt hot, as though he were surrounded by fire throughout the exorcism. Everywhere was hot, he explained. I tore my clothes. The reason he felt heat, it is claimed, is because the exorcist, known as Wise Man Daniel, kept calling for fire to surround Ibaka. As he prayed, Wise Man Daniel supposedly poured the fire of God onto the man. As the exorcism progressed, Ibaka felt weakened by his words. Every time I tried to regain my power by standing up, the fire would come again and I would fall down. Ibaka's case was documented at length by Emmanuel TV. The footage is extensive, and at times highly disturbing. Ibaka is even shown biting the head off a live chicken so as to use its blood to enhance his dark powers. By the end of the coverage, Ibaka is shown sitting next to his father and dancing, now redeemed, a man purged of his demons. Any Abaka's case is far from singular. The television channel is known for having showcased a wide array of cases of alleged demonic possessions over the years. Whilst it is difficult to account for the genuineness of the case, with the incentive of appearing on television arguably muddying the waters as to whether or not someone's actions are real, the footage is without a doubt shocking. However, that speculative remark aside, any Ibaka's possessed state does appear similar to others that have been recorded around the world. It is this similarity which makes this case intriguing and ultimately inexplicable. The phenomenon of demonic possession is global and historic. It reaches beyond areas that hold Abrahamic religions sacred. In northern India, on the banks of the river Ganges, lies a district known as Vindhyachal, which houses one of India's most sacred temples to a powerful Hindu goddess. Within the temple, there is a mysterious sealed compartment, which is only available to a select few. It is known as the Cave of Spirits. Within this dark chamber, it is said that spirits which have possessed innocence are extracted and then incarcerated. For those who visit this temple, it is a last resort. Somewhat strangely, many of the stories of women who end up there searching for spiritual relief are similar. 
Often their supposed possession begins after having walked down a lonely road at twilight. These women have described being watched by an eerie presence and then somehow overtaken, after which they are not the same again. What supposedly possesses these women is not known. Belief is divided, with some stating that gods of the earth and air are responsible, with others believing it is the doing of malevolent spirits of the dead. In the following video, an exorcist called Shukla attempts to exorcise two young women and free them from their possessing spirits. According to their parents, the two young women had been affected for many months before being brought to the temple. One particular incident is described, during which one of the women's eyes are said to have turned blood red as she started talking nonsense. After having consulted medical professionals with no results, they called an exorcist to help. In the video, Shukla can be seen starting his ritual by placing the girls into a trance. It is at this point that they begin to flail about wildly. According to the exorcist, when the spirit comes forth, the girls lose all control over their bodies. It is when she starts acting in this uncontrolled, frenzied manner that he knows she has been possessed. Their possession having been confirmed, the exorcist then proceeds to urge the spirit within the young women to speak. Singing and chanting follows, as the girls continue to act delirious. After some time, the so-called spirit appears to agree to leave the body. However, before it does so, the exorcist must find a place to jail the spirit once it has been ejected from the girls' bodies. It is now that he takes them to the sacred cave of spirits. Once inside the cave, the girls' bodies start to lurch in a mad rage, until, finally, the spirits are exorcised. The ritual is over. Whilst demonic possession is generally associated with Catholicism and other Abrahamic religions, the experience of these young Hindu women and the similarity of their experience with cases from other areas around the world shows that possession is, in fact, a cultural universal. Even the need for treatment from a religious figure shares similarities with what we know as a Catholic exorcism. Such a shared phenomenon really does challenge our understanding of demonic possession. What force is causing so many people to act in such a similarly shocking manner? In 2013, a young Mexican woman called Diana suffered from a strange affliction. She described instances when she was asleep but felt that she could not breathe or move. When she would eventually wake, her body would be covered in mysterious scratches. Diana suffered for more than two years without remedy. Eventually, unable to endure any longer, Diana and her family turned to an exorcist. After meeting with the afflicted lady, Addy, who is described as an experienced exorcist, claimed that black magic had been used to force a demonic spirit into Diana so as to torment her. A television crew was invited to document what happened next. <laughs> At the start of the exorcism, Diana is led into the middle of a circle made of salt. She willingly walks into it and does not appear to be overly troubled. This all changes when Addie begins making the sign of the cross on her forehead. 
she then becomes visibly disturbed and falls to the floor. Addy encourages Diana to be strong, while inciting sacred forces to come to her aid. In an attempt to sabotage the exorcism, the demon within Diana is said to have compelled her to rip the necklace that supposedly contained protection from around her neck. Diana can be seen to be in sheer agony. At times she makes the sign of the cross in order to ward off whatever it is that is affecting her. She shows signs of being in real physical discomfort, shouting in anguish as Addy uses high-pitched sounds in an attempt to expel the demon. As the ceremony progresses, Addy uses a ceremonial dagger, raising it and reciting incantations in an attempt to force the demon out of her. This provokes a physical response from Diana as she begins to retch on the floor. With the demon now losing its grip on the woman, the exorcist sets the circle around her on fire. Addy continues with her incantations until finally the demon is believed to have been expelled. After the exorcism, Addy states that what transpired was the manifestation of a demonic being. As for Diana, she appears visibly relieved. I am calm, she explains. Nothing is making me feel uncomfortable. To her mind, she had genuinely been cured of her affliction. The only thing that remained from the alleged demonic possession were the remnants of the mysterious scratches on her back. Before I discuss my final demonic case, I would like to take a moment to talk about In Search of the Dead, my new full feature documentary. For those of you who have not yet seen it, In Search of the Dead follows my journey of discovery in search of proof of life after death. From my trip to Romania to investigate the most haunted forest in the world, to a historic haunted manor in Scotland. Join me as I interview renowned academics and shadow, experienced paranormal investigators in search of answers. It is two hours of thought-provoking discussion and exploration, as I question not only whether or not it is possible for us to survive death, but also whether or not we are actually able to communicate with those who are now beyond the grave. If you love the paranormal and are interested in finding out more, please do click the card on screen to watch the trailer or check the description box below. In Search of the Dead is now available to rent or buy on Vimeo. Purchasing access helps support the work that my husband and I do for the Paranormal Scholar as independent creators. In Search of the Dead can also be streamed as a member of our Quill and Ink Society, both here on YouTube and on Patreon. Membership also gives you access to additional perks, including advertisement-free videos and exclusive bonus content. Please head to the description for full links. Thank you. The demand for exorcists is rising exponentially. One of the countries that has seen the greatest increase in demand is the United States of America. According to Reverend Vincent Lampert of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, when he was first appointed as an exorcist in 2005, he knew of only a dozen exorcists in the United States. This figure has since increased dramatically. Speaking in 2019, Reverend Lampart stated that there are at least 175, and more each year. There is no official data on the number of exorcisms performed every year. Neither is there a public record of precise numbers of exorcists. A few have spoken out publicly, but most prefer to remain anonymous, to avoid being targeted. The church itself encourages its parishioners to seek medical or mental health assistance, and reserves exorcism as a last resort. When all other options have been exhausted and thoroughly dismissed, then the church will help, with an exorcist being called to perform an ancient ritual. The fact that there has been such a dramatic increase in the need for this last resort treatment in recent times either indicates a scathing condemnation of medical professionals' abilities or a growing spiritual crisis. The story of Becky Parker, documented by Paulist Productions and reported on by ABC News in 2011, 
is a remarkable case of alleged demonic possession. Parker claimed to have been possessed by as many as eight demons over several years. I know what they look like, I know how big they are, I know where they are in my body. It is believed that Parker was especially susceptible to demonic possession, as she had experienced many trials and tribulations in her life, including abuse and decades of substance addiction, which left her emotionally and mentally vulnerable. Barbara Ganji, a documentary producer, first met Parker when she had employed her and others to do some landscaping work. Whilst working at her property, Parker had asked permission to use her bathroom. After she came out of the bathroom, Ganji claims to have witnessed a terrible transformation. Supposedly, Parker's eyes went dark, her face distorted, and she started snarling at Ganji. Rather disturbingly, she is said to have turned to Ganji and said, You don't know what you are messing with. We hate you. After that, Parker fell to the floor and began writhing and screaming. Ganji was absolutely shocked to see her in such a state. In her mind, her condition could only have been caused by demonic possession. Thus, she contacted a local Catholic priest to come and administer the prayer of deliverance. Ganji filmed what happened next. Speak, I command you, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, no! Leave. No! No! Leave now, I command. Oh, don't let her go. Stop! Stop it! You can get her off me! Tell me your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speaking later about how she felt during the ritual, Parker described how she hated the priest and wanted to hurt him. On video, Parker can be seen being restrained as she contorts violently, shaking, kicking and screaming, seemingly doing all that she can to throw off those who are holding her. It is as though the priest's quiet words are causing her physical pain. As well as screaming and writhing in response to the ritual, Parker also supposedly spoke in different languages. When the first of the demons supposedly inhabiting her body was finally exercised, she collapsed. This moment of liberation was, according to Parker, unlike any other type of relaxation she had ever felt before. After that, one by one, the demons were expelled. At the end of the news segment in which she is interviewed, Parker is reported as having been entirely delivered, having gone on to get married and start writing a book about her experiences. This chilling case was documented in 2011, since then the number of similar cases has only increased. Whatever the truth concerning demonic possession, it does seem to be a growing epidemic afflicting more and more people every year. For most, such as Becky Parker and others whose experiences have been documented on camera, there are happy endings. Yet, this is not so for everyone. In some other alleged instances, the possession is reported to have been so severe that the spiritual battle which followed cost the life of the exorcist involved. There is a mortality rate. With the cause of these dark happenings yet to be unanimously agreed upon, it seems as though these matters may only get worse before a lasting solution is discovered. Thank you for watching. To never miss an upload, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on all notifications. Equally, you can sign up to my newsletter to receive notifications of new content directly to your inbox. If you enjoyed this, you might enjoy my previous video on demonic encounters, the link to which is on screen now. Until next time.